Hey YouTube family, it's your girl Show the OT, your fave occupational therapy student here to help you and others live their best lives. Let's get started. So today's video is going to be about occupational justice, occupational injustice, and how it's impacting the black community. All right, let's get into it. So this past Saturday, I was able to be a part of an event that COTAD hosted. COTAD stands for Coalition of Occupational Therapy Advocates for Diversity. And during this event, we got to discuss some of the things that were going on as far as racial injustices and just discussing how OTs can help in any way. And also just getting our feelings out there and just talking and kind of healing. And so during that time, we got to split off into groups. And in my group, I got to have some really meaningful discussions and I got to be really vulnerable with a group of strangers who were just there to discuss and debrief and just to understand where all of our heads were at and what we were going through. And so during that time, we discussed a lot about occupational justice and occupational injustice and how the black community has truly just not been able to be just to be able to engage in the occupations that they want to do freely like we just can't do what we want to do without having to think it through come up with a plan and decide is this safe for me to do and so that's what inspired this video i just want to you know shed light on what these terms are what they mean and just point out some examples on how Black people just don't get to engage in meaningful and desired occupations as other groups might be able to do. Again, gonna be looking down at my laptop. Please do not mind me. To start, I want to give you some definitions. The first definition I want to give you is occupational justice. Occupational justice is the right of every individual to be able to meet basic needs and to have equal opportunities and life chances to reach toward her or his potential, but specific to the individual's engagement in diverse and meaningful occupation. So that is the definition, just got it straight off Google of occupational justice. Now I'm going to read the definition of what occupational injustice is. Occupational justice occurs when a person is denied or excluded from or deprived of opportunity to pursue meaningful occupations or when unchosen occupations are imposed upon them, thus limiting life satisfaction. All right, two definitions, a lot of big words going on. So I'm kind of just gonna um, break it down a little bit for you. Occupational justice basically gives people the right to engage in their desired occupations. Point blank period. Like, it's just, it's kind of just like, we have the right to engage in the things that mean the most to us. Occupational injustice, the opposite. We are deprived of doing the things that we wanna do. We are limited from or isolated from doing the things that we wanna do in some way, shape or form. Now, occupational justice and injustice affects everyone. I don't wanna say that it doesn't affect all populations. It truly does. But there have been some unique and startling incidences and examples that have just shown that Black people are not able to engage in the occupations that mean the most to them solely based on the color of their skin. All right, let's break that down. So I'm going to give you some examples that have been in social media that a lot of you have heard of. And I'm gonna break that down to you how that is occupational injustice. So the media is not labeling these as occupational injustices, they're not. But this totally applies to occupational therapy and occupational injustice. So that's why I wanna address this in this video. Let's start with Ahmaud Arbery. Exercise is an occupation. It is something that a lot of people engage in or participate in, and it is important to a lot of people. It was obviously something that Ahmad Arbery liked to engage in. He was jogging when he was shot and killed. So 
because of the color of his skin, people in that neighborhood assumed that he did not belong there. And so he was not able to safely engage in his occupation of exercising or jogging. And so earlier I mentioned that black people, in order to engage in their occupations, they have to formulate this plan in their brain. They have to think it through. They have to be like, okay, let's, let's decide. We might not do this consciously, but we do do it subconsciously. So maybe if Ahmad had thought, okay, I'm, I wanna go jogging, but the neighborhood that I want to go jogging in is probably predominantly white. And so I am a black man. If I run in this predominantly white neighborhood, it could possibly be unsafe for me. He probably did not have that thought process when he decided to take a jog that morning. And so the fact that black people have to formulate this plan and this thought process just to try to stay safe because even when we do think of these plans it doesn't matter we can still lose our lives based off the color of our skin and so that's occupational injustice he lost his life for merely trying to engage in the occupation of exercising running jogging it's something that everybody engages in but but he could not do it in the, the location that he wanted to do it in because others perceived him as a threat. Let's go into our next example. Our next example is going to be Mr. Christian Cooper. Christian is a bird watcher. That is his occupation. He likes to engage in watching birds. One day he was engaging in this occupation and a white woman saw him and they got into a disagreement about her having her dog on a leash. And so because she got upset about this disagreement they were having, she took it upon herself to call the police on Christian Cooper and claiming that he was threatening her. This video, this incident was recorded. It is obvious that Christian Cooper was not threatening her. And so this right here is another prime example of occupational injustice. This man cannot engage in his meaningful occupation of bird watching without having the police called on him. In this day and age, everyone knows the consequences of calling the police on a black person when there's no need for that. There's no threat. There's nothing going on. There's nothing illegal going on. He's simply engaging in his desired occupation of bird watching. That is a prime example of occupational injustice. Black people simply cannot engage in the things that mean most to them without having the color of their skin cause someone to be threatened by them. The last example that I'm going to talk about just for this video is Breonna Taylor. Breonna Taylor was shot in her home while sleeping. We discussed the eight areas of occupation and one of those is sleep and rest. Sleep and rest in your own home, in your own bed, is a very desired and meaningful occupation. She was not able to engage in that occupation without losing her life. That is how serious this stuff is. It's not just something we say, just something we're talking about, no. I think a lot of people like to bring up the examples of where individuals were engaged in illegal activity and as a result, police brutality wasn't that bad. But these are three examples and there are so many more. These are just three recent examples. There are so many more of how black people just live in their everyday lives gets them killed or gets the police called on them. 
And so I just wanted to make this video to give you guys a little perspective and to like let you think about that. The things that you do every day that mean the most to you, imagine if you are not black, imagine doing those things, just living life, minding your business, and based off of the way you look, your life is threatened. So to wrap this video up, this is my call to OTs, OT students, OT related, anybody actually. It can be anybody, but since this is a channel about occupational therapy, this is my call to OTs and OT students. One of our biggest roles is advocacy, advocating for our clients, advocating for their well being, advocating for their health, advocating for their mental health, advocating for the people that we serve. And so in this time, it is time for us to advocate for our clients of color, specifically our black clients. It is time for us to advocate for our black colleagues, our black OTs. It is time to advocate for them so that they no longer experience occupational injustice so that they can engage in the things that mean most to them, that give them purpose in life. That's important. It's so important for our lives to do the things that mean the most to us. And so it's time for us to do our jobs as OTs and to advocate for the people that need it most. Thank you so much for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you in my next video. Thank you. Bye.